praise the Lord, saints. We give God praise and we give him thanks for tonight. One more time. One more time we are in his presence. We can come before him with praises and with thanksgiving. We can open our hearts and ask him to have his own way. This is an important time. And as we look into these lessons tonight, there is something here that is really joyful. What Christ is sharing here is his joy. And you know, even in America today, there is a certain amount of joy that we can walk with. Even in this election period, there is a certain joy, a certain sense of awakening, a certain sense of acknowledgement. And as we walk with that, we give God the praise. We give him thanks, the honor, and the glory for the joy that is being shared from heart to heart. And as we look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the joy that he is willing to share with us, let us understand what it means and let us seek to walk in his ways. Heavenly Father, tonight, as we present ourselves unto you, as we seek to give you the honor and the glory, as we bow down before thy throne this evening, setting our hearts in a manner to understand and to learn of you, prepare us, Lord Jesus, and give us the ability to understand what thou sayest unto us, and that we would grow in your grace and mercy. This I pray in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Tonight, as we look at this lesson here, my message to my brothers and sisters of faith, I want you to begin to share the joys that Jesus is sharing here. Even though you would notice that I said we would start from the 13th chapter, but for clarification and to bring a greater light upon the word of God, we're going to start, go back from the 10th verse. Not the, seven, not the 13th chapter. The 17th chapter, the 13th verse, is what you have before you. But we will begin at the 10th verse. To sort of highlight and to bring us back into that area or that our minds would more or less focus on what God has for us tonight. So let us look at the 10th verse of the 17th chapter. And I always ask you, please, work with me with your Bibles. This is how we learn. This is how we grow. And this is how you would be able to fulfill that prophecy of Paul. He said, don't just sit and take what the preacher said. He said, but he gave great to the Thessalonians. He said, I, I respect them because they don't just take what the preacher said. He said, they go home and research it. And I'm encouraging you to research and to make known, even unto me, where you see something that I didn't see. And this is what brings the joy when we are walking together in the spirit of the Lord. This is important here. And you would see this joy that Jesus is speaking of here is a joy that you, it's, it's not the joy that the world give. It's not that the peace that you can get in from this world. This is not that peace we are speaking of here. We are speaking of a certain amount of contentment. And even this joy that we are speaking of here, it is about to come with great sorrow because he's about to lay his body down to pick it up again. Visualizing the pains and the burden of the cross. Even when he went to pray in the garden of Gethsemane. So he is aware of all this. And you would see the language that he is speaking here. That I expect those of us who are walking in the world. Would be able to speak the same language. And understand God through the Holy Spirit. We begin this evening from the 10th verse. And he says, all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am glorified in them. And too many a times, you know, we read these scriptures, and what we do is we, we just override it. Yeah, glorified. We know what it means to be glorified, do we? But to be glorified here in his followers means that the life of Christ is being revealed in them. The revelation of the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is being revealed in his disciples. We learn to love and to care. We learn to think about what we would say, what we would do, when we do, how we do. 
This is important here for us to see and to know. So that character of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came into his disciples only through those who believe his word. They acknowledge his word and they sought to live his word. They were willing to give up even on their boat full of fishes. That morning when they saw Jesus on the beach and he cried out to them and he said, drop your anchor on the, left, on the right hand side, pull a little deep, drop your nets. Lord, we fill all night. But you know what I like in that scripture? Is Peter said, because of you, thou saidest. And this is what is happening because too many of us, we know what should be done. But if we follow the life of the disciples, we realize that they walk not on their own. Yes, Lord, because thou sayest. And when they dropped that net, it was so overfilled with fish that they could not bear all in the boat. And this is what we are looking at here tonight. And this is why he is saying they are glorified. I am glorified in them. Jesus is glorified in them. In other words, I've finished the work that you sent me to do. And now it's coming to that climax. Help me to understand and to walk in thy will. So you see here, this is what it means. Could I say that when I look at you or when Christ himself look at you or the, the Holy Spirit look at you, can he say that he is glorified in you? And this glorification here is not living a, a sanctify, a, a, what you would call a sanctimonious life and you're walking and you can't do anything. No, but you must be willing to fight every battle, to endure every trial, to walk in faith regardless of, and most of all, to love your enemy. I'm not telling you be silly and continue to put your neck on the chopping block to get it cut off. No. You have to know when to draw the line. He says, separate yourself from among them. And if it's getting overbearing, then we have to separate ourselves. But that doesn't mean to say because you are separated from them, if you see them in a situation that you just pass and look at him and, you know, and you're thinking about all that he did for you, did to you. Don't be like that. Sometimes we go through real hurt and pain, but we have to be able to walk as God walk through his son it is god who saved us you know through his son you know for god so loved the world that he gave unto us his only begotten son and to every time we remember that golden text john 3 and 16 it should really bring us back to the point where we are willing to give ourselves where we are willing to give of ourselves and this is what jesus is doing here he said, I have, listen, he said, and I am glorified in them. Lord, I came and I shared your word. I shared your message. There was no hesitation in me. There were those who walked away, yes. Remember at one point, according to John 6, there was 125 following him. And when he said unto them, I am the bread of life, remember what, it, what happened? His only 12 remain, and he turned to them. He said, are you not leaving too? Your faithfulness will always be questioned. Your sincerity will always be questioned. But it's up to you. Your willingness to walk as guided by the Holy Spirit will always be tested. Again, it's still up to you. Because we cannot walk both sides of the street at the same time. We have to keep on, either you're on the left or you're on the right. And the scripture says, either you're hot or you're cold. You can't be lukewarm. And this is what happens to so many of us. So when you're trying to walk both sides of the road, you're lukewarm, you're neither here neither, nor the other. You're neither one nor the other. And what you would call here now is deceitfulness and fraud. And we have to move away from that. So it's either Jesus or the world. Hold on to Jesus and live. And this is what he is saying. He, you know, I want him to, to be able to say this when I reach the heavens, the pearly gate. He said, yeah, Lord, I'm dear Father, I'm glorified in him. He kept my word. He brought my messages the way I expected him to do it. He loved his enemies as much as I have loved him. And these are the things we have to look at 
We cannot live for the flesh today because the flesh will deceive. And hello, we have to understand this. While Jesus was yet in the flesh, he was teaching us from a higher level of learning. And this is where we have to bring ourselves. Observe this 11th verse in the name of Jesus. He said, and now I am no more in the world. And now I would, this is, this is why we are called. And this is why he said, I speak to you. I speak to them in parables. But it is for you to understand. So when you sit with this word of God before you, and you are about to, you, you, you're meditating and, and allowing God to, to work through you, you will understand that there is a life beyond this life. And that is a life that we are seeking to prepare for. The life beyond this life. It's not something that we can understand. It's not a life that we could explain. But we must know. And we must believe. While Paul said unto us. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But yet. I would like to be here to share a message that if it's but one more soul I can save. And this is what Jesus is doing here. He fell in love with his disciples. Who believed in the word of the Father and this is what he said. All mine are thine and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. I have given them your word. But there was a sad time. There was a down time. In every good thing you do. Even we are going for a betterment. When you stand and you watch your child walk away. And board that plane. And the doors are closed. And you see that plane. The tears fill your heart sometimes. You're wondering. You know it's for a betterment. But you're wondering what that child is going to meet on the other side. Well Jesus did not have to worry about this. Because he knew what was on the other side. He came from the other side. And I want to share that with you. I want to show you that. These are things. That I would like you to be able to share. Hear what he says in the fifth verse of this very chapter, the 17th chapter. He said, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You know, sometimes we run over these things. Because as I normally say, we are avid readers. We can read very well. But while you're reading, you must listen. And if you can only hear what the Spirit's saying if your ears are open to what the Spirit is saying unto you. Otherwise, in most cases, all we do is we hear ourselves. And this is not what we are here for. So let's think about what Jesus is saying. And now I am no more in the world. Jesus in mind and spirit recognized that his journey was way before him. I'm on that journey out, Lord. And you know that I'm coming home. And my mind is no longer set on this earth. But to be at the right hand of you. In that time of glory. He said but these. Look at, look at what is happening here. He said but these are in the world. But these. I'm leaving those who I am glorified in. I'm leaving those whom thou hast given me out of this world. I'm leaving them in this world. And I'm making a request for you. From you. On their behalf. Because you are the only one who know me before the world was. And here I am, Father. I want you to see the prayer. Here I am, Father, crying out to you on behalf of these that are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those 
whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. Are you seeing something here? Keep those that thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are one. What goes on in the church? You know, there are those of us who exert ourselves, you know, we push ourselves, we, we get so big, we get so powerful that, you know, I am the good shepherd here and I have to do this. And you don't even know when it's time, according to the scripture, to pull somebody aside. He say if you have a problem with your brother, the, the scripture teaches us that. But you as this big bishop and archbishop and whoever you may be, you don't know when to do that. Or you cannot, you're too big now to follow the scriptures. So you're going to stand in the midst of the congregation and belittle or bring down and saying that, you know, this is a time for I to do this. Are you hearing the word? Did you hear yourself? This is what we call pride. Are you saying that I'm going to exalt my seat above? Oh, I'm going to show that brother that I am the boss here. But that's good too. Because I understand that. And I respect that. But when I see your attitude, it makes me disrespectful of you. It makes me lose that respect for you. Or that joy that I had with you. You have just killed me. But Jesus, and this is what the flesh does. But Jesus is showing us something different here. He said, keep them. Keep true thine own name. It is only in the name of Jesus. Those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. I'm seeking that joy. I know that relationship that be between you and I. And this is something, you know, sometimes you sit in church, you don't even want to sit down by some people. The vibration that comes off, you know, you, you, you have to know what you are doing. And sometimes we create that vibration. And the scripture says, if I, my heart, my hand, if my hand cannot go with my heart, I'm not going to push my hand to shake your hand. I'm going to bow down to you. I'm genuflect to you. But if my heart cannot go with my hand, I'm asking you all, stop being deceitful because we are shaking people's hand. And then when we walk out here, we say all manner of things. You're shaking people's hand and as you turn your back, you're... Like if they did you something. Let us. Hello. Jesus. Church we have to bring ourselves to the point. That God can use us. And let us seek to walk according to the way of the spirit. And this is what Jesus is doing here. He said make them one. As we are one. And this is what we are being called to do. To share spiritual joys. Make somebody happy. You know, I'm sitting and I'm watching the political system. And you're hearing the pundits and all of these people who, they say we have never seen so great a joy among, believe, you know, the people. Think about all of this. If this world could share that kind of joy, then why can't we in the church share that kind of joy? You feel the heaviness when you enter. You feel the deception when you enter. When you look at the eyes, you see and you know. We have to be careful. What Jesus is sharing with us is much more than sometimes we are willing to achieve. But this is what happens. The 12th verse, let's look at the 12th verse. Remember what he says? Make, give, listen. Those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. One in what? In mind, in heart, and in spirit. One in character, one in faith, one in love. Can we develop this and build upon it? You don't have to hate your enemies. But sometimes you have to stay away from them. Because the flesh can only take that much. 
So we have to know what we are doing and why we are doing. And as elders, you know, at one time I, I would holler. I would, you know, embarrass. Because that's what I kind of grew up under, you know, with some of the elders and the way they speak to you in church. But you know, as we begin to read and understand, your whole attitude should change. Your demeanor should change. And this is what Jesus is asking here for. May them be one as we are one. Sometimes you just don't want to be around certain people. You know, when you begin to read these scriptures and try to understand them, it's telling us something. You cannot just come and read this scripture here and just run over it and say, well, I've studied the, the 17th chapter of St. John. This is telling us how to live. This is teaching us how to live. Hear what he says in the 12th verse. He said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. As you are reaching out, as you are called and you are anointed and, you know, again, commissioned, chosen for this particular work of faith, what are we doing? Are we sharing the light or the life of Jesus? Remember what he says here? I am glorified in them. Do you feel the same joy that I share, that I feel? Are you hearing from the same Holy Spirit that I'm hearing from? Or is it that you are walking in your own ways? And this is where we are today in so many instances. So I want to look at, as we go into this 12 verse, he said, those whom thou givest me, I have kept them. And none that is, none of them is lost. None of them is lost. But here he ends up with this lesson. But the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. This is something for us to think about. In the church, there will always be a challenge. There will always be, and sometimes it comes from the most peculiar places. Those who you would think should be at a higher level, they, all, they always bring themselves. You know why? Because they love gossip. They love gossip. And we have to bring ourselves away from that. The son of perdition. You have to watch. You have to be watchful. Within the house of God. Be careful with what you say sometimes. And this is why sometimes when I'm speaking I say. Please don't misrepresent what I'm saying. But I don't have no. I mean it's just not to offend you and cause you not to sin. But I have to say what the word says. If it offend you, I'm sorry. And yet still I say I don't care. And if I say I don't care, I don't mean it in a derogative way. If it interferes with your heart. Did you think that Nathan, when he came to David, after David shared that good joy with him and saying good joy, Nathan... You have noticed something, Nathan? Oh, speak on, O king. Speak on, O king. Look how comfortable we are. I live in a house of cedar. But the ark of the covenant is intense. No wars. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm laying with my hands behind my hair. I'm eating what I want. Any damsel that I need, I take. But the Ark of the Covenant is intense. And this is what it calls to be a prophet. We have so many prophets in the church, but none of them prophesy. 
None of them bringing a message. None of them hearing from God. Where did you get that anointing from? But this prophet, I would imagine before he get, went to bed that night, he said, Lord, you heard what my king says. And I'm asking you, what is this? How do we go about this? And he went to bed. And then the voice of God spake unto him, Go tell my servant, David. He cannot build that, uh, that temple for me. And as a matter of fact, I've traveled with him, with them for 40 years in the wilderness. Did I ask them to build me a house? Let him know that he cannot build it because his hands is stained with blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? His hands is stained with blood. Now he was performing the will of the Father. We're dealing with a righteous God here. That same God said, thou shalt not kill. But there was a work to do. There was something to be done. And God chose David to fulfill this work. But because I am righteous. Because I am the God of truth. Because I am the God that do not go back unto my word. You have not lost your salvation. But you cannot build that sanctified tabernacle for me. You cannot. Because your hands are stained with blood. But what happened to David? When David heard that, did he get angry with his, his servant? Did he call in all the other kings? Did he call in all his chamberlains? Did he call in all his servants? Or did he wait until they were on the table and embarrass Nathan? No, he did not. But he confessed. Have mercy upon me, O God. You see, when we have that sort of heart, we don't stand up and say, I, I, I could say what I want, when I want, where I want, because I am. You cannot... You have not yet been converted. You have not yet reached that point of submission. Because you cannot say what you want, when you want, where you want, and how you want. We are dealing with people. God didn't give you that authority to beat his children. But he gave us that authority to feed. And what he's saying here, save the son of perdition. If, and this is what it's saying. The wheat and the tears have to go together. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. I want to share something with you here from, from one of the Psalms. Psalm 41. I want to read for you. Really it's the ninth verse. But I want to read for you from the seventh verse. And hear what it says. Please bear with me. All that hate me. Whisper together against me. Against me to do, against me do they devise my hurt. When you are planning, I want you to listen to this word properly. When you are planning, before you leave home, you don't call your friends. And you're saying unto them, I'm going to do so and so. You're a man of God, you know. I go in and do so and so. This is what the words say. All they that hate me whisper. Now are you thinking you coming to them with an open heart? So this is why I'm saying to you, you have to be watchful. You have to be equipped. You don't walk blinded. And you don't take nobody for granted because the flesh is a deceiving thing. They, know, they love you when they need you. And after they use you, they don't care about you. I've experienced that the hard way. Hear what, is, hear what the word is saying. 
All they that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. There are some things that I can say here. That it don't, but it don't make sense. So this is why I'm sharing with this with, with you. You have to be wise. And this is why Christ came and he, was, and he said, I'm glorified in them. If he is glorified in us, he will, we will know how to walk. Because he will show us how to walk. Hear what it says here in the 8th verse. An evil device, say they, cleave fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. You know, this is what, and sometimes we become so fearful. But again, I ask you to think twice. I ask you to think twice. They are planning your downfall. They are planning to embarrass you. They are planning to make you shame. They are saying all manner of things in your behind your back. But in your face they are coming and hugging you up. Don't touch me. man. And this is why I said. And I will say it again. If my hands cannot go with my heart. I am not going to stretch my hands to you. I become deceitful. Because I'm shaking your hand, but I'm not happy. So I'll say, hello, how are you? Good day, bless you. And that's it. We have to know where we are going. And this is what Jesus is speaking about here. An evil disease, say they cleave it fast unto him, as something happened to you. You know what's happening. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up. They're wishing you to die. And we have to be very careful with that. Because it is in God's timing. Not yours. Neither mine. But here we, the ninth verse. Remember I said to you the ninth verse. Yeah. My own familiar friends. My, not friends you know. My own familiar friend. Sometimes my own familiar family who I, who I deny myself for. Who I make, you, who you, you let yourself down for. So that they can look good. Hear what it says. In whom I trusted. Which did eat, at bre eat my bread. Had lifted up his heel against me. I want you to hear this verse because I wonder what was going on through David. Imagine Absalom now seeking the life of his father. You know, and that is father and son. Much less for a stranger. Absalom desecrated his father's bed. And still seeking now to take his life. The son that David loved. Who is this fellow here that you don't know? Even though he's your brother in flesh and body, but you don't know him from whence he came. You reach out to him. Do not expect him to hug you in all, because he could be hugging you with a knife to the back. We have to think again. So as you go along, and this is what Jesus, this is what David is saying here. But thou, O Lord, the 10th verse, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may require them. You're not asking for power to destroy them, but that they will be requited. And that they will understand and they will know that whatever situation you may be going through. It is God who is in control. When I read this verse in the studying of the lesson, because the son of perdition here is, Jesus, is Judas, I want you to think about what we're doing here. I want you to understand what we are doing here. The son of perdition here is Judas. But hear the words of Jesus on that supper table that night. 
He said, the one who dip his hand in the bowl with me, he is the one. Do what you have to do and do it quickly. You sat at my table. I gave you my best meal. You could have gone in my fridge and take what you want. When you want, how you want. I'm not looking back at you to see how much you take. And then you walk away from my home. And you begin to say, I don't know what's happening with them. You, know? you see that kind of life them living there? I don't. You, these are not good. This is not good. Did you ask me why I did what I did? Did you ask me why I went through those changes? No. But you begin to judge. And this is what Jesus is saying. I kept them all. But your scriptures must be fulfilled. And that is the wheat and the tears must go together until the day of harvest. I fulfilled that part, my God. I have done that. And I know that it is about to happen. Now Jesus is saying, while I'm yet not in the world. Remember, Judas have not yet betrayed him. But he is speaking. Listen. Andrew, while you were under the fig tree, I saw thee. This is what we're speaking of here. This is, what we are, this is why we are called at a spiritual level and we need to lift ourselves. It is not going to be understood by everyone. But we have to seek to understand what the word of God is saying unto us. The 13th verse. And now come I to thee. You see, I've done that part that the scriptures might be fulfilled. It's done, Lord. He is going to do whatever he has to do and he is going to betray me. But I have to prepare these. Who I'm leaving who is still in this world is not no longer about me but it's about them now and I'm praying you he said now I come to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy that they might have my joy. And this is if we cannot pray for the joys of others. If we are always looking to bring down others. To prove that we are right. To prove that everyone else is wrong. To prove that nobody don't know. And I know because I am God gift to humanity. You are not. Neither am I. So let us learn to love. This is what Jesus is saying here. Is it offending you? I'm not sorry. Because it is only these things to bring us right. And to change so that we can change. If you don't know what you are doing wrong, you will continue to do it. And this is the reason for the law. This is why the law couldn't fulfill. The law couldn't save us. The Ten Commandments could not save us. All it did was point out. But I want you to understand the point. The, the, the Ten Commandments is holy. But it could not save us. Paul said it. The things I would, I would not. And the things that I would not, that I would. This is where we find ourselves. He said, I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. This is what we should be doing. All of a sudden, we start to work all kind of work. No longer guided by the Holy Spirit. No longer waiting on the Holy Spirit. We're working all kind of work. Sitting by the river all night. Looking for something that you didn't put there. I want you to understand we need to know. We're going under the tree all night with a book and a candle. All you need to do is to kneel at your bedside and talk to Jesus. You have a room in your house? Go inside there. Light your candle there 
and talk to Jesus. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. So that we can find that peace. That peace which passeth all on the earth. Ask God for mercy. So that we can really walk with him. He said, I have given them the word. This is what is important here. I have given them the word. I have given them the word. And the world had hated them. I have given them the world, the word, and the world have hated them. So I do not expect everyone to like me, and you should not expect everyone to like you. I want you to listen to these words. But what we are doing today, we are trying to please people rather than please God. And this is what we need to do. Let us seek to please the Lord. These are Jesus' words. This, this whole chapter here is red letter edition. He said, I have given them the, thy word, not my word, but thy word. And the world hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of this world. What's she playing? What are you playing? You feel you more righteous than everybody else? You feel you better than everybody else? Huh? You might have a BSc, Bachelor of Science degree. And, you know, I, I love what Shambak said. Pastor Shambak, maybe he didn't go. He said, you have all this BSc, but you have no Holy Ghost. You could stand here and you could define the word, you could break down all of these things, but no Holy Ghost. Remember, the very anointing that comes with baptism did not come until Jesus was glorified. Are you hearing that? John baptized. That doesn't mean to say that they, received, they did not receive the Holy Ghost. The seventh chapter of John, the 39th verse. Not until Jesus was glorified. So there are those of us who God did not call according to the spiritual walk. But they become intellectuals in the word. And some of them truly live the life. Some of them use the word for a good living. And then God called you. Someone who cannot even read or write. And he began to work miracles through you. And you do not see yourself as that true instrument of God because you are aware that Dr. So-and-so and they're carrying a, D, you know, a DR behind their name and this and that and the other. But God is speaking to you. When the night comes and you don't want to believe it. Well, they're even showing it now in movies. The time has come for us to see this young lady just receiving visions and everything that she received, she, she recorded. All of a sudden she'll be walking and, and at the moment she'll just stop because it just flashed before her eyes. And she would be told what to do. And she would be writing letters and sending it to the king. And telling him all his dangers. And to the end of it all. The last note that she sent. He got angry. But his son was wise. And while it is a movie. There is a message in it for us. His son was wise. And he said I know the writing. And he went and bring that daughter. The father still did not even want to hear her. But she was able to tell him. 
When your, son, when your wife got killed, being pregnant, I sent you a note. Well, he wants to know how she knew that. He, hello, he started to cry now. Let us understand our children. They will be coming and telling you things, and I'm speaking to you, hierarchies. Because when the child comes and says something to you, you say, well, somebody else had to bring a witness. It could cause you pain. Pain that you do not want to bear. So let us think again. He said, I have given them thy word. And the world hated them because they are not of this world. Even as I am not of this world. You still want to walk as though you in the world? You still want to walk according to the way of the world? I hate, I hate to say it. You know, but I like the Calypso, the, 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 the Calypsonian that say, if the, priest could, if the priest could play, who is me? If the priest could play, and I want you to think about that. I don't care who you are. If the priest could play, who is me? Don't tell me about culture. You have to know where you stand. You have to know who you are. You have to be the light. When thou art converted, Peter, strengthen thy brethren. We have to know what's going on here. He said, I pray not that thou should take them, the 15th verse. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. You know, sometimes we need to sit, and I ask that we sit and, and take these words seriously. And not just write something out, but go by, go it verse by verse and see what it's saying to you. And Jesus is praying to the Father. This is a prayer, you know. Jesus is praying to the Father and letting him know, Father, they are not of this world, the 16th verse, even as I am not of this world. Sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is truth. And that is what I give unto them, Lord. The 14th verse says, I have given unto them thy word, and the world had hated them because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Take this word seriously. Let's stop playing games and as we reach you, just well, as you walk in the church, you're shouting. You ain't say a little prayer yet, but you're shouting. You're the biggest shouter. And at times it happens. Before you enter, you're getting directed from, but you know something? Those truths will be known. It cannot be hid. Sometimes before you enter, you are told what to do. I'm not condemning that. I support that. But I'm seeking, I'm speaking about the players. Stop playing. Stop the playing. If we are sanctified in Christ and in the word of God, we would learn to love. He said, and as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. Go ye therefore, the last great commission, into all the world and preach the everlasting gospel. And he said, lo, I am with you always. Come with a promise. I am with you always even to the end of the world. Listen, it was not about him. And this is why I'm speaking here today. It is not about us, and it should not be about us. But it should be do about those whom God has placed under our care. I don't care what legacy you leave behind. I don't care how many billions you leave in the bank. The end of us is the same. You may die on a more expensive bed than me, you're still dead. 
You may be put in a, a, a better a casket than mine, you still bury it. You could embalm your body for 150 years, you still die. It's no use. So we have to understand these things. And as thou has sent me, this is why we are sent. And we are sent to bring a message of truth, a message of grace, a message of sanctification. And for their sake, the children's sake, the congregation's sake. Not my sake. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through thy truth. Neither pray I for these alone. I'm going to try to close this scripture here tonight. Neither pray I for these alone. But you would observe in the, in the ninth verse, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. In other words, he was just praying for the inner circle. The second ring of the circle. But if we look carefully. You always notice. That the inner circle is always small. That's where the sprocket is. And that's where all the, the spokes come right back to. And that is really the strength. The spokes are weak. One you can take it and bend it. But when you align them from that inner circle, it becomes true. Think about what is happening here. Think about what God is doing here and what he is sharing with us here. But now, as I shared with you, remember he prayed for those out of the world. So the world, the second circle, which is the 12. And now, he's connecting them to the inner circle. Hear what he's saying here. Neither pray I for these only the twentieth verse, but for them also which which shall believe on me through their words. Them which shall believe on him through their words. He said that they all may be one, as thou father art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. Look at the circle here again. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The Father, the Son, and the disciples. You see in the inner circle? You must be able to see this. And you cannot see this. I never saw it before until God showed it to me. Oh, what stupidness he is talking. Yes, you, you too intellectual. Because you cannot hear from God. And we need to listen to what God is saying to us. He said, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. This is what sharing is all about. This is not about me. And you say, I don't do it like them. And I don't have to do that. And, I don't, and you're condemning everything that you have no understanding of. And this is where we are in the faith today. And we need to change that. Listen, man, listen to this word. This is food for us. And this could change us. This could bring us back to where we need to be. That they shall be one, the 21st verse, that they shall be one as thou, Father, and me are in me. And I am, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. Father, Son, and his disciples. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou givest me, I give them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them. And thou in me. That they may be made perfect. In one, and that thou wouldest, and that the world may know, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. 
O oh Father, the closing. He said, O oh Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Where I am, you cannot come now. But thereafter, if you should live the life, if you should walk the walk, and if you should do the things that God has called us to do, we would find that peace. You know, there was a lady in Vista Bella, just around where they have that tire shop now on Point of Pier Road there, just as you cross Lambie Street. Mother Mary. Bishop Valley and I used to go and give her communion every Sunday. And every first Sunday, not every Sunday, excuse me. And this morning, when Bishop Valley and I went to give her communion, she had no feet. You see, God is still in the working business, you know. She had no feet. And Mother Mary said, Bishop, um, Bishop, Bishop Valley, I have something to say to the young man. Bishop Valley said, say on. She says, son, I had a vision for you. Will you receive it? Look at the wisdom. Will you receive it? I said, yes, mother. She said, the Holy Spirit said unto you, to go and carry the message. Share the message. Tell them whether they bear or they forbear. She said, and after that I saw a chariot with six black horses coming and they were singing swing low sweet chariot coming forth to carry me home she said and son i was ready i was ready and i went with them on the chariot singing swing low not very long after she died and i want to say this to you sometimes you see some people in the box and they dead 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 when you watch them you could see dead but when you look at Mother Mary, she was asleep, calm, comforted. And I know that I know that I know that she was in the arms of our Lord and Savior. And this is the comfort we need. And this is what God is saying here. And this is what Jesus is praying for, the 24th verse. He said, Father... I will that they also would be given, would ha I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. This is what the thing is all about. It's not you, I am here and you are down there. Where I am, you ministers of God, are you willing to share the glory that God has anointed you with, with those whom he had given you? Oh, are you Lord of all? Oh, I, I'm questioning you, you know. And the time has come for you to make up your mind and come down from that high seat and ask God. He said, where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. It's not a glory that I could share with them, but it's a glory that they can behold and feel proud of because you didn't call everyone to sit at your right hand. You did not send everyone in the world to be sacrificed. I am the one. I was the Lamb of God. But I want them to enjoy my glory. I want them to enjoy my joys. I want them to know that I am for them. For thou lovedest me. Before I love this, thou lovedest me before the foundation of the world, O righteous Father. The world had not known known thee, but I know thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. 
and I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that they love where it thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Wash me, but not my feet alone, my hands, my head, and my heart. At a point in time when Peter realized what Jesus was saying, if I wash thee not, you have no part with me. He said, wash me, but not my feet alone, my hands, my head, and my heart. And this is what we need. Some of us are looking for power. Some are looking, looking for authority. And we want to be the one man, you know, the one man whatever. You are nothing. We will all be standing over you and they will be standing over me at some given point in time. So let us be careful and let us seek to understand and to walk in the will of the Father so that we can find peace. And I say to you that peace which passeth all understanding, that peace which God alone can give. So may God bless us all. May God make his face to shine upon us and may he give us peace. You will be betrayed. You will be left alone. You will be made to feel that you are nothing. But I want to remind you, Jesus loved you. Oh, Father, the world knoweth not thee. The world had not known thee. But I know thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love where it thou hast loved me be in them and I in them. May God bless us all. May God make his face to shine upon us all. May God give us that peace. That peace which passeth all understanding. That joy. There is a joy that is circling. There is a joy in America right now. And if you are wise, you will understand what I'm saying. Pray that that joy be fulfilled. In the almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the betterment of humanity. It doesn't mean trials wouldn't come. At one time when they felt the pains, they said, don't hang me like Matthew said, don't hang me like him. Hang me upside down. I'm not worthy to die like him. So we have to take stock. And church, whatever you may be going through, that too will pass. May God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you. And may he give you that peace. I say that peace which passeth all understanding. That peace which only God can give. Heavenly Father again tonight. I thank you for this message. I thank you for using us. Watch over us and keep us. And guide us as we go. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray for the elders. The elders who shared with us. Those who are still alive. And thank you for the revelations that the elders who have gone, the work that they have done, is still living in us. May your blessing rest upon those who have received the gift and, and seeking to walk and to understand it. May you bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pleasant night, one and all. Thank you all, and I'm asking you all again to view the videos on YouTube and share with someone that they can go on YouTube and pull up the videos and, you know, like them. Like them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good night.